Thank you for giving me the, this privilege to talk to this audience just after lunch. It's a privilege, I know. But I'll try to keep everybody alive. Uh, thank you also to, for giving me this uh, opportunity to uh, make a presentation. Uh, I am soon reaching the retirement age. Well, very soon. It's less than a month. So happy to share with you a little bit of my 39 years of experience in life insurance and reinsurance, and is specific, specifically in disability. What is specific to disability models? What are the traps to avoid? And which is the ideal model? It's are the questions I'm going to try to address and give you some hints in the for coming 45 minutes. I'm going to follow this following agenda. When we talk about death or mortality covers, that's a rather clear notion. But when we talk about disability, much less. So I will start with some reminders about product and definition characteristics. Then I'll present you some disability models or model families. And as models need to be checked, for their accuracy with monitoring, I'm going to give also some hints about disability monitoring. And we'll try to reach conclusions. So in product design, of course, pro disability product can cover I pay either an annuity in case of disability or a lump sum. The annuity can be for the lifetime or can be temporary. But what is actually disability? How can we define it? So the question is, when is a person disabled? There are two elements in the definitions. An insured is unable to get an income. So if the insured is unable to get an income, so this is the economic part of the definition, or in case this person has physical impairments, this is the physio physiological definition. If we take the economic definition, unable to earn. Um, earn, uh, well, can require somebody to well, is somebody still able to have the own occupation or an own or similar occupation or any occupation? That is already three possible definitions of disability. And I'll tell you some more about physiological definitions. So in the economic definition, uh, some products rely on the own occupation. A definition of disability, that is, the the person being totally unable through sickness or accident to follow own occupation. While if you go on the own or similar occupation, there's a, a difference. This is totally unable through sickness or accident to follow any occupation for which the insured is reasonably suited by education, training, or experience. While any occupation is really unable to have any occupation. And the three definitions make already a big difference. And the products, when we come to, I'll come to product definition just in the next slide, they can combine those definitions. I would add that the, the products or definition can be all as well partial or total, can be also temporary or for the whole life. And the well-known cover, TPD, is total and permanent disability. Now, I mentioned covering, uh, sorry, I mentioned the uh, physiological part of disability. And it can be as well, well, the one usual way for the product uh, definition is to say uh, if there is a doctor assessing that the person is unable to work. The difficulty being 
Are the doctors always in the right position to make this assessment? Are they nice to their patient or whatever? So the company can also say, uh, subject to a, a check by our medical doctor or some not so user-friendly, uh, well, policyholder-friendly conditions. Some other way to approach it is take an, an approach by activities of daily working. And here I cite you the Association of British Insurers because they made standards for the market so that everybody defines the same covers, the same terms. Because in disability, because of diversity of definition, how can consumer understand what is what? When a price is offered, the question comes, but what is covered? So if I take these activities of daily working, they try to be as specific as possible. An insured is unable to do th three specified work tasks uh, ever again among that list. And as you notice, this list is criteria that are measurable, 200 meters, 12 stairs, two kilos, 60 seconds, and all that. This is easy to measure. You don't need even to be a medical doctor. Well, the medical doctor will still have some own idea whether the person is cheating on the test, because, because if I ask you to carry two kilos from your table to the next, you can tell me, oh, sorry, I can't. But, uh, well, it's, there are ways to check whether a person is, uh, what, what the person is saying just at the moment of underwriting or check is done in real life. Uh, just recently, the, the insurance companies got forbidden to use private detectives for such investigations because there was a lack in the, in the, the, the legal con basis. So they will, be have, they will have to complete the law in order to be able to do that. But it's part of the things that happen. So those definitions have another use or other characteristics. You don't see any mention of mental diseases, depression. Those are factors that count for about 40% of disability claims in uh, part of Europe. And they are the most difficult to terminate. Those are more objectively phys physical. Of course, if somebody is blind or deaf or whatever, they will fail on some of those activities, but that's one way around. So the, I give here in the slide the reference to, to this, uh, those definitions. That are, they are part of the document that also give critical illness definitions for the whole market. And uh, it's a very useful document because they First of all, it's updated very often because they uh, adjust to the progress and, and it is also a, a way to make the market uniform. Now, I mentioned the cover definition. They can at times make uh, use of several disability definitions. For instance, you can have a product offering a own occupation for the first one or two years. Let's take an example of a surgeon who gets, well, has an accident and get, loses the use of two fingers on the right hand. Cannot be a surgeon anymore. But uh, ca could be working as a medical doctor or even slightly more than a well, Could be still working with a med medical occupation uh, as an alternative. So this cover with a mixed solution will give him the disability pension for the first one or two years with the idea is the time for this person to take the measures to adjust, to adapt to a new occupation, similar. Of course, you would not require somebody who is doing manual work to suddenly uh, go into uh, uh, actuarial math mathematics. Well, it's not, uh, it's suited by education or social status. So this person will then be judged after two years, can you, still, can you make uh, an occupation that is similar to your former one? And here you have partial disability that can intervene. In such a case, 
the insurance company might cover a loss of income due to the change of the occupation. But the person won't get any uh, pension f after the two years because, uh, well, would not get any full pension after the two years because it's com considered to be able to work. So a disability product also has a characteristic that it has a waiting period or elimination period. That is the time during which the person must be continuously disabled in order to uh, get qualified to get disability benefits. So in United Kingdom, you typically find the waiting periods in weeks. In uh, continental Europe, more in months, but it, it comes to the same. And it's worth mentioning them because they will, of course, influence the probability of getting disabled. Last but, last but not least, the disability degree for partial disability. I give here an example of a scale that was a, a scale that shows two characteristics. On the left side of the table, you see the degree of impairment as a medical doctor will assess it. While well, this person is dis dis disabled 40%. Then, uh, from these degrees of impairment, you say, okay, it's between 25 and 66.7, so two-thirds. So the benefit degree is equal to the disability degree, so it, it will be 40%. This table also says less than 25% of disability, there is no indemnity due. This is to avoid all the small case with small economic value, but big burden of administration. And to avoid discussions about the, law, the case where people are severely disabled, the rules just stipulate over two thirds, uh, the full disability uh, benefits are payable. In disability product, just a reminder about some dangerous features that open the way to anti-selection or difficulties when they are not well planned or priced for. First, the cost of living adjustments, which is a provision that says that the disability pensions are indexed with some, for instance, salaries indexed in the market or whatever. Today, you know what the inflation rate is, but if you offer a disability product for 20 years, or looking back in the history 20 years ago, I don't know, don't know exactly the history of uh, Colombian uh, inflation rate at that moment, but I know that in Latin America there were two digit figures and the first one was more, more than one. So if you offer a disability product with such features of indexation and you have priced for 5% inflation, you may have a problem, more than a problem. Second feature, I, well, I've seen some badly defined products where the, 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 the specification was that the disability annuity would be payable until normal retirement age. Sounds fine. That's what the people were, wanted to be covered for. It was in group insurance. Except, well, that at the moment the product was made, normal retirement age for females in Switzerland was 62. Then it was raised to 64. And those disabled women, already disabled women, suddenly got the right to get two, more, two years more of payment, was not priced for. Uh, so the product definition should be defining with a, definite, a given age, but not a definition that could vary in time. Now the difficult question about premium rate guarantee. I'll show you some trends later on in my presentation that would perhaps discourage you to offer guarantees. But when disability annuity is a rider to a life benefit and the life benefit has a premium guarantee, it's difficult to say there is no guarantee on the disability premium. Some companies in Europe well, have found a way around and they put a sentence in the general conditions that stipulate that if, in case that the technical result of the disability uh, business would justify it, the company may adjust the premium rate. I've never seen any company making use of this provision, 
but at least they have a door opener and an escape in case it's really necessary. Social security definition. That's the best way to coordinate your product with the, the base, base cover, because, well, a person it would be covered first by social security, then you will have a layer of, of pension fund, and then on top of that maybe a private policy. Uh, so it's, and I came from a country where it's, the law says, uh, in the second pillar, which is the, in the pension funds that companies are insuring to, a person is disabled if, in, if this person is recognized disabled by social security. So it's very simple, and uh, it's a total coordination. The difficulty is when the authorities or social security is changing or varying definitions, respectively uh, allowing more or less generously. Um, I'll show you some effect on the statistics of Switzerland also in the, part, in the next s slides. Last but not least, for the underwriters, the insured amount. If you don't check in the financial underwriting that the benefits are limited to, well, they should be lower than the income that they replace, and even after taxes. The tax effect is often ignored. But, well, it was much mentioned this morning in one presentation, but for, for disability income, it's as well important. The disability pensions are not taxed at the same rate as the income. So if you replace one by the other and they are the same amount, it's a net gain for the policyholder. Why would a policyholder who gets more after tax when he's disabled than when he's working? Why should this person go back to work? Now welcome to disability models, because it's the, now I am able to model something that I've defined. So model families, there are several tenden tendencies or ways to, to take the problem. If you are a good mathematician you like, or a physician and you like the, the good uh, mathematical models, you will find it beautiful to make a model in continuous time with uh, integral differential equations and lots of and, and, and change of, of disability to active state every uh, fraction of time. That's fine for the modeling, you can put it to the end, but maybe you would uh, reach some problem at the moment of calibrating. Uh, some simple model, they would take approach of Markov chains. They are used in uh, demographies, so why not to make, make use for disability? So I'm going to show you some examples. So there would be models where you develop a framework and then you see I am going to find the, find the probabilities and put them into the model. Once I have the probabilities, I will get the premium rates at the end. Uh, they can, you can also take an approach separating the two phenomena, the inception of disability and keeping disabled or being still in disability state. So it's the inception annuity models. And the other approach is let's estimate the claims, claims charge and out of the claims charge, I get the premium rates, and out of the premium rates, I get back to the actual basis that would give me those premium rates. Actually, this approach is not useful in long-term disability. In short-term disability, you can it, but long-term, you don't have the claims charge correctly on a few years only. So I will get to the mark of change, the idea being well, you have a population, a total population that you observe. People in this population, they have two possible state or situation in life insurance. Either they are alive or they are die, dead. And you keep track of this population for years and years. You never lose anybody and nobody enters. So if you have 100,000 people, they are all alive at age 20. 
If you run the model for 400 years, they will be all in the state dead, or most probably. Well, long enough, they will be all. So that's a, a block, a closed population that you can observe. And you can extend this to three states for disability. You can say a person can be either active or this person, well, alive becomes an active or disabled person. So you must distinguish the two because the active will pay premium, the disabled will get benefits. And, of course, the three, third state will remain. So in the mark of change, there are transitions between the states that you would de define so, so the active can uh, remain active, they can die as active, the disabled can remain disabled, or they can die as disabled. Uh, and the dead people, they uh, remain in their state with probability one. With one historical exception, but it's not in the model. And between the active and disabled, of course, there are those active who get disabled. And I put some actual symbols just to show you well, APX is a probability of survival, and AI means from active to disabled. And there's a reverse way that's possible. A disabled person can recover and be active again. So this approach sounds seducing when you put that. I'm going to be the first presentation with uh, formulas, but not too many. But because I think when I present in uh, foreign language, maybe a formula will be international language. So that's how I formalize it. So my Three-state vector will be a population having active, disabled, dead people. And I presented transition probabilities, which can put, be put into a transition matrix. And we can then define the state at the next age by multiplying the Lx vector by the transpose of the Px matrix. And you get exactly the L x plus 1. And it's the way you can run from age to age to age to age and calculate all the states until the end of the Markov chain. And what can you... Well, uh, one characteristic of this matrix is that you have total of properties per line is equal to 1. That's why you have those two relations. So now how from this one can you get premium rates for disability, person, disability. For instance, if you want to insure somebody at 30 years old for a disability cover until 65, you start a population at age 30 with a, an arbitrary number of people that are all uh, active at age 30, And you run the model from age 30 up to age 65. And then you will have age 31, 32, 33, etc. a certain number of people who will be disabled. So you know how many will be disabled at those ages. The present value of all the claims you are going to pay is simply discounting this number of people who are disabled. No, it's this one, okay. Let's see, you don't need the formula. <laughs> so having those, you can get premium rates. Now how can you fill the matrix with probabilities? You need to make some observations. Nice, okay, make statistics. But what do observations show? I take termination rates for males. age group 30, 15 to 34. And I notice, okay, uh, there are two, two reasons for termination. Mortality, it's a very small yellow part, and recovery. If I take in the age group 35 to 49, mortality is higher, 
the recovery is slightly lower. If I take age 50 to 64, mortality is still higher, recovery again a bit lower. But what is shown there is that the rates are not depending really on age, but on disability duration. And if you take a Markov chain, you have no idea about disability duration because a Markov process, by definition, has no memory. What happens at a next age is totally independent of what happens until then. So our model having a one state of disabled people is a nice looking model, is simple at first sight, but doesn't uh, this doesn't fulfill the criteria of disability models. You can repair, repair it or improve it in one way. You split the disability states in a few. Your active people are still the active people, dead people are still the dead people, but you will define disabled in first year of disability. So the active people will become disabled in first year disability. But the disabled in first year disability will never remain in first year disability. They will go to second year disability or they will recover or die. Or die. So those in terms of Markov chain, you will have transient states for of disabled, first year, second year, third year, etc. You can define, five, for instance, five states of disability and an active and disabled. So it increases, of course, your model, your matrix, matrix and your, the number of transition probabilities. Uh, it still has the characteristics that after being, well, you have, uh, afterwards you will have some state of disabled where the recovery rates are no more depending on the duration because long duration, small recovery anyway. So more complexity, you lose part of the advantage of the Markov chain. So, and you still have, in summary, um, some dependence between the active and the disabled people. Um, your, your global modeling requires to have mortality of disabled, mortality of active people, termination rate, incidence rate, uh, those kinds of features that all dependent from each other but that make the model rather complicated to calibrate. And I have not yet talked about introducing waiting period. How shall I manage to do a model with a waiting period three months or six months or with disability degree? I still put 100% in my model. I would then present rather a good alternative that is inception annuity models. Here you separate the two, the two uh, phenomena. First, the inception of disability. Second, the paying benefits to the disabled. Here again, I have some notation that it looks actuarial, but it's just as well to be a bit more clear. The waiting period is something that you must define in your product. From it, you will have some probability. It's not a simple disability probability. It's the, a probability that somebody gets disabled and is still disabled after the waiting period W. You will have an age at the beginning of disability, X prime. You have an age at the moment the cover is terminating, T up to disability duration, a G that is the average disability degree, and then you, you define probabilities of recovering or dying. It's not necessary to have a probability of recovery and a probability of death for a disabled person. There is no payment that is linked with that, it's the termination of a payment. So in the statistics, uh, rather than having those two variables, well, I added them in my graph, but you don't, don't need to have the details except for information. So it's the S probability of recovering or dying. 
And on time, uh, if I represent what I mean, you have x, the age at the beginning of the year, x prime, you can assume it's in the middle of the year, so it make it x plus a half. The waiting period applies, and then at x prime plus w, there is the first disability payment that starts in an, in, uh, in, uh, an annuity, or you can assume it will be the time necessary to assess that the person is totally disabled and deserves a lump sum benefit. The model characteristics, first of all, for reserving purposes, I've not mentioned that in the Markov chain, but uh, here you still need a reserving basis that is a deterministic survivorship group of disabled, just to define an annuity, but for disabled people. So actually you just have a recursion formula that takes into account those disability duration because these S probabilities are depending on entry age in disability and uh, elapsed uh, duration of disability. From that, you would calculate a present value of a temporary annuity for disabled, and then you have a difficulty with a X prime that could be a half or whatever, a partial age, so you can make some simplification. I'm not going to enter into the models more, on the other side, on the annual risk premium, yeah, the, the last formula, I swear, um, an annual risk premium for disability will be made of two parts of usual. A risk premium has an incidence rate, probability of disability, Ix of W. It multiplies the degree of disability, it has a discount factor, and then you have the present value of the annuity that is also multiplied by a claims management fact, uh, cost factor because you need to reserve as well the disability annuity and the management, claims management cost linked to it. So it's an expected cost of the claims that arise during the year. And it's a measure, a measure that, you can, that you need to f follow. This morning, there was a presentation about lab-supported products, and disability would come in the country uh, category. I explain. Uh, here in the graph, you can see a curve that is the risk premium that I've just shown the probability. So it is the, the curve that starts slightly below 5% at age 35. <laughs> empieza a disminuir. Pueden ofrecer el producto con primas fijas, como la fórmula favorita en seguros, en donde la póliza siempre paga la misma prima, todo el tiempo. Pero podemos ver que esta persona va a pagar mucho más. Estamos hablando acá de la línea azul horizontal. Acá se paga demasiado al comienzo y no lo suficiente. Después de 46, luego de nuevo de demasiado, después de los 62, en este ejemplo. También agregamos acá las gráficas y las curvas de eh, las eh, primas fijas, pero muestra una tasa de prima constante pagadera en caso de que la edad de entrada sea 35-64. La consecuencia de estos productos es que vamos a tener una reserva de vida activa que... Es lo que vemos acá, esta forma de S inversa. La póliza paga demasiado al comienzo, o sea, acumulamos una reserva durante la vida activa y luego la póliza deja de pagar suficiente y se toma de estas reservas y en cierta edad esta reserva puede convertirse en negativa, pero sería mucho más negativa si la edad de entrada habría sido 45 o 50. En ese momento la reserva empieza ya por debajo y termina en cero. Y en dichos casos la, tenemos asuntos de, o problemas de reservas negativas. Así que estas reservas negativas, uno debe preguntarse si es aceptable tenerlas eh, o ponerlas a cero o no o que se vean respectivamente compensadas por otras reservas. From country to country can be different, but it can also mean that 
if you there are well, there is some fin financing due in case by the company in case the company the reserve would be negative and it must keep on zero. More, moreover, if you have a level premium, it can happen that in, for instance, 24 months, in the last two years of the cover, it's impossible for the policyholder to get any benefits because the waiting period is longer than the remaining time. So even if the person gets disabled, there is no benefits. If the policyholder is well advised, he should cancel the policy and say, I'm not going to get benefits. And if the policy, even if he does this rational attitude, well, it's for the insurance company to be, uh, uh, well, will not recover the negative provision at the end, but will have to finance it. In group life contracts, it's only annual risk premium, doesn't make sense to have level premiums. So now I told you about trends, and I'm, I'm going to show you some of those. After talking about some risk segmentation, um, we have in mortality some segmentation for smoker, non-smoker, that is well, most well known or preferred lives according to other criteria. In disability, one of the most common criterion is the occupation. I'm going to show you as well the impact it has. The uh, smoker status is less important for disability. It still has an, an importance, but less. And trends, we can see a statistics show some, I wouldn't say correlation, yes, yeah, some correlation, some correspondence between unemployment rate and disability incidence rates. And besides, there are trends that go up and down in the history. Op occupational classes, just to be clear about what I mean here, there are four, well, usually four kinds of occupations from white colors to the heavy manual uh, occupations. Looking at incidence rates by classes, for UK, and they are all percentage of standards, uh, percentage of a standard table, 75, 78. So don't compare them with each other, just look at the groups. For the groups waiting period four weeks, class one, two, three, four, you can see class four has incidence rates of about 230, while class one is at, at level 60. So we are talking about a, a multiplicative factor of about four four times more for class four. If you look at the other uh, waiting periods, it's the same kind of classification. Now, if I go to recovery rates, do they change by class? Yes, they do. And surprisingly here, the recovery rates of class, if you look at, it's a bit more messy because there are less disabled people than active people. So of course the statistics are more uh, subject to fluctuations. But you can see that systematically class three people have more recover, a better termination rate than class one. Can look a bit, uh, strange if you look more at I would like to go, okay, at mortality. Moreover, you see that mortality of people in class one is higher than in class two, three, and four. Why so? You should look at the cause of disability. In class four, where you have manual work, you have more people making, yeah, having accidents and getting disabled after an accident. In class one, where you have uh, people uh, quietly in offices or attending conferences, uh, the reason for disability can be more critical illnesses like heart attacks, or, well, or you get a cancer and then you cannot work anymore for some time, then you die. Of course, the mortality of those people 
who, are, who have a disability annuity for some time is higher than those who had an accident and whose mortality was perhaps less impaired. Now looking at trends on time, uh, incidence rates in Switzerland, I take them from the year 76-80 first statistics for three age group, 15 to 34, 35 to 49, 50 to 64. And next statistics, stable. In 1985, introduction of, uh, of a law that says that uh, it makes compulsory that everybody should be covered in a pension fund for some disability benefits. And that's when I say, when you have a social security definition, you may be a victim. Well, in group insurance, in, it's annual risk premium, so you can adjust to the new uh, risks, but it's difficult to predict. And then continuing the trend, 1966, 2000, 2001, 2005, and you notice that for the age group 35 to 49, they kept increasing. So if you compare for this age group in this last moment, they were about 10 per mil, and they were at four per mil in 76, 80. So it's no, well, it's more than double. And if you're, of, well, here there's no guarantees group insurance, but in individual insurance, it was the same trends. In 2005, there was a revision of the social security and allocation of disability annuities became much, much more uh, stream, uh, difficult for people to get one, and the incidence rates go down. And it, they continue going down. If you look at termination rate, do they uh, follow a corresponding way? Yes, termination rate for recovery first went down, and the last statistics raised uh, high up, while mortality of disabled kept going down. This is the normal mortality trends. It is the same for disabled people. Just a graph that shows an unemployment rate in blue in Switzerland, a continuous curve, and an incidence rate for the disability annuities in percentage of the year 2001-2005, so there are relative uh, variations. They are more or less parallel for until 2009 or so, but after this reform of the Social Security, there, will, there was a, a change of level for the uh, waiting period 24 months, but there is still a correspondence, if not a correlation, between the two. Some words, short words about actual monitoring. There are two ways of approaching monitoring. One is on financial figures, and the other one purely statistical information. One way is to make a technical account for disability where you put on earnings the provisions entry, disability premiums, then the technical interest for one year, then from that you deduct uh, annuities paid, and the math mathematical provisions at the end of the year. This is a, the yellow part is an account for the whole disability portfolio of the company. Interesting here, well, in my example, it shows a loss on disability. It's about 5% of the premiums. So should the, premium adjust, should the company adjust the premium 5%? Yeah, at times you make, this is a mistake to conclude too, too quickly there, because this account, if you manage to split it in the two parts that are below, you have much better information. First, underwriting results, you take only, we take still the probability for future disability only, you take the disability premium and the technical interest, it's the same, but there are less provisions or less interest, and you have the disability arising from new claims only, and the mathematical provision for new claims only, and you get an underwriting loss that is 2.2 million, not 1.6, 7% of premium. And while the claim settlement results, which is the remaining, is the uh, underwriting result, it's the resolving was sufficient. So actually, an, a premium adjustment here should be 7%, not 5. 
Uh, monitoring on statistics, of course, all the uh, incidence rates that I, measured, I mentioned before, you need to make statistics about them. They have some difficulties, the difficulties being that uh, if you take, for instance, the probability of getting disabled with a waiting period two years, uh, you will take on the numerator number of people who get disabled at 35, and numerator, you should take number of people who were active at age 33. And, well, in statistics, maybe the, 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 the under risk, well, it makes some difficulties to calibrate those uh, quantities. Short conclusions before you draw your own one. The best pricing model will be in, inefficient, in my uh, view, well, if definitions of the products are not good. In my long career, I've seen bad news about the US market in the 1990s. Well, it was some professions that had understood how to benefit from uh, an own, own occupation cover. It was the medical doctors or the teachers, or well, some, some categories of those were uh, putting down all the results. I've seen some bad, bad results in Australia in 1998, from which people said, lesson learned, uh, we'll never lose uh, in money in Australia anymore. Two years ago, losses in Australia in disability again, change of law or whatever. It was not linked to any product, well, bad pricing according to models. It was due to product features that were not covered uh, protecting the insurance company against those. So that is, once again, I may insist, but the best model will not be able to prevent any losses if there is something wrong in the definition. For me, the incidence annuity model looks like the best approach. And first of all, the monitoring of incidence and termination are totally different uh, flows and processes. and. There is no uh, influence from between each other. They should be, well, logical between with each other, but less linked. And segmentation of risk, well, I've mentioned it too. And if the market starts segmenting and some companies offer disability for occupation class one people much cheaper than the others, and other companies keep on general premium, of course, they will end up getting all the class three and four of the market, while the company segmenting will get all the best risks. So beware in the market if it starts to be a trend and follow or precede the crowd. So now I'm coming to the floor and your questions in English, and I have a Spanish translation in case. Will we have any questions from the audience? If you can please raise your hand. No. Hi. Um, one, one question regarding the definition of the disability when it's tied to the social security definition. How have uh, European governments coped with detaching from, from that definition? Uh, or, sorry, how, how have the, the, the European yeah, companies coped with detaching from that definition? Was it easy? Uh, thank you for your interesting question because it addresses a real problem. Um, in group insurance, where where the cover is really aimed at the second pillar, well, the, the pension funds, is practically not possible to detach it. But there is, well, first of all, the government, well, you asked me first what the, the government do. Uh, there is a possibility to make uh, an appeal against a, a social security definition, uh, decision by the pension fund. So first of all, that's not in the definition of disability, but there is now a way for 
uh, to oppose for uh, a uh, disability allocation. Now, in individual insurance, where it was also most common and it's where the problem uh, comes, either you come to uh, very different definitions such the activities of daily working, because it's not linked. I've seen also some uh, purely uh, the definitions that were linked to physical impairments purely and excluding, for instance, mental diseases. But excluding mental diseases, well, a medical doctor would tell me, well, told me already, it's difficult to exclude mental diseases because part of the physical problems that arise after, well, can be linked, directly linked to the to a uh, mental disease or respectively depression or, well, back pain, is it mental or is it, well, it's difficult to, to draw a line. So uh, one of the way is to say that the independently of social security de decision, the disability case will be assessed by our medical doctor and the company makes the claims assessment itself or keeps the right to check a medical assessment made by a, by a doctor. So, but it's not, well, either you take a different uh, uh, definition that is different enough, or if you're in the line of the definition of unable to perform an own or similar occupation, which is the social security definition in Switzerland, then keep the, the company keeps the rights to, uh, to take an own decision independently of social security. Theoretically, it works. Practically, reputation risk if the company makes use of this too often and to decline cases that were allocated by Social Security. So what is more costly, you can ask yourself. Do we have any other questions? Good afternoon. The issue of uh, disability due to accident or illness, and uh, I didn't hear much about you know losing the members, losing the limbs, and becoming useless. I didn't hear about that that case. Dismemberment, he meant. Yes, thank you for your question. I, well, I have 45 minutes in my, my lecture. So yes, of course, there is uh, the distinction, distinction between accidental, well, ADND, accidental death and disability. That's one product. Well, disability, also there are some definitions, disability definitions that are linked to a table of such impairment, losing uh, one finger, losing two, losing, well, it's a long table if you, do, if you go up to that, and it's possible to, uh, and that makes it quite objective. The inconvenience it has, it's only, yes, try, first of all, for the, uh, for the insurance company is, is no such interpretation, well, the interpretation, the risk can be that a uh, policyholder can cut his finger only himself, but apart from that, that's an objective criterion. It doesn't, it's not a cover that is very often, uh, very often uh, offered in, uh, in Europe, continental Europe, because it leaves aside all the, again, mental disease and, and this, what happens, well, if you're a working in, in, in a, uh, with a profession in a bank or in insurance or in administration, you, your disability risk is not really to, to lose one finger or one leg. Well, it can happen, but what? If you lose one leg and you are in a wheelchair and you can still have your occupation full time, you are not disabled. Could be a professor in a wheelchair, and it doesn't matter. I'm not disabled. So in, it, it's not really addressing the second economic aspect. It's only addressing the physical aspect, and it's paying dis disability benefits for those who maybe don't need it. Well, okay, just pushing a bit far to be understood. 
and it's not paying benefits to those who really can't work and they don't have a typically physical impairment. Now, the distinction between accident and sickness is important too, because if you take the law in Switzerland, there is a compulsory accidental cover for everybody that works, and it covers disability. So in the pension funds, the cover is accident excluded. Or more precisely, everything that is covered by the federal uh, accident company that includes professional diseases is not covered by the, the private insurer. And this, and besides those annuities, they are pay, payable for the, for the lifetime. So it makes, in the models, you have incidence rates uh, that are measured on different, but, but the model can remain exactly the same for disability by sickness. Simply, the incidence rates will be smaller. And surely, you need also to measure recovery rates differently, as I showed by classes, if they are different from, from the classes. So by a disabled person by accident will have probably better recovery rates than the person who gets disabled by depression. But it's not an issue to, with the model, but it's just an issue of, uh, first of all, of definitions, and yes, to get to find the right product definition. But thank you for your question. Any further questions to close this uh, session? Well, we want to thank Mr. Miklet for your participation in this seminar. Thank you, Mr. Philippe. <laughs>